Floss Tube. It's Jen from Jen's Stitching Mesh. I'm back for an update video. Today is Monday, April 8th. It has been over a month since my last video, but last month was March and it was crazy. We had Market, which was a great market. I enjoyed it 100%. Hobby went with me this year and he was great. He loves to talk to people. Got to see everybody. Got to spend time with Katrina and Lisha and that always makes me happy. Um, spent uh, quite a bit of time talking to um, Christine from Hollis Hands Creates and um, Tara, the new floss tube superstar. If you haven't watched Tara Sullivan, you need to go watch her. Of course, everybody has heard that because we're all talking about her, but she is wonderful. She's an amazing stitcher and she does great videos. Um, and then like the week after that, I went to a conference in California, which was like a 10 minute ride from Disneyland. So every night after the conference, not every night, two nights, um, we went to Disneyland. So that was fun. Um, been to a couple of concerts. It's just been busy, busy trying to get everything together. We, our, uh, college went through our, um, accreditation meeting and that's always stressful. We did fine. Actually, they did really well. I was very impressed. And, um, we're getting ready for the end of the semester stuff. So I'm having to do assessment reports and observations. I actually did an observation today. We have what's called concurrent enrollment. Some people call it dual enrollment. So students can take college level classes when they're in high school. We have those types of uh, classes on our campus taught by CCA faculty, but we also have classes taught in the high school by the high school faculty. So I have to observe my faculty and then I have to go and observe the concurrent enrollment faculty as well. So I've got two more, no, nope, three more observations and I'm finished observing, then I have to do all the reports, but you don't care about that. Just complaining. So it's been a busy spring, but I have had some stitching. I've got some finishes to show you. Also went to an antique shop last week and I've got the coolest thing in the world. You're going to be so excited when I show you what I found and then um, got some plans. So I'll share all of those with you. All right, so first I want to share my finishes. I've had several finishes since the last video. I think these are new since the last video. First up, which I may have shown in the last video, was from the Seasons of the Heart from Brenda Gervais. I have finished the summer chart. I was working on this as a 25-7 piece, so I would stitch 25 minutes per day every day, and I finished that. This is stitched on 36 count. It's a fabric. I believe this is from um, Farm Girl in her Patreon. And it's mostly the called for. Maybe if I do this, it, the light won't shine through it so bad. But this was fun. And then this blank space is for the little label right here. So, so that was a finish. And then after that... I switched to um, another Brenda Gervais. I just had the chart. There it is. Farmyard Parade. So aren't those cute? And I have both of those completed. I first completed the woman with her chickens. And then I finished the man with his geese. So... That was my other 25-7 that I've completed. And now I have a new one. No, I have one more completion. That's a 25-7. So this is a kit that came out years ago from Lizzie Kate. It's called A Little Gray Hair. I started this last April and then just really didn't do very much because I didn't have the right colors. And I guess I just didn't want to go look for them. I don't know. I didn't finish it until this year. So... I have finished everything except the beads. So on the yellow and the darker pink egg, there are beads that go there. So very cute. And then you finish it. I've got the template to finish it in kind of this egg-like shape. And this, I have to return this to my sister because it's not my chart. It's my sister's and I've had it for over a year. 
And I think that's all of my finishes. So next are my whips that I've been working on or am working on. So first is my 25-7 piece. I, on the same day that I started the little gray hair, I started two of um, Stitching with the Housewives charts. One is the Calendar Crates April. And the other one I started was the Trucking Along April. So these are going to be my 25-7 for now. So I'm working on currently the calendar crates. And I don't, I may have talked about this before. I'm not doing the crate part. I'm bringing up this checkerboard border to the top. So I am close to a finish on it. Just have a few carrots to add and then that checkerboard. I'm stitching it on 36 count Gunmetal from Weeks Dye Works. Isn't that cute? I have to fin fill in all of the yellow for those other white flowers, which... So maybe another week I'll have this done. Because I only spend 25 minutes a day on it. And I love carrots, so I'm enjoying stitching that. And then when I finish that, I'm going to switch over to the Trucking Along April, which I have a lot to do on that one. I've just got the top kind of banner of carrots and radishes so so those will be my 25 7 projects over the next month or so and again i'm stitching this it's 35 36 count gunmetal from week side works and i'll show you the bag we're supposed to show bags and i always forget that i love so much to love bag so most everything is in a so much to love bag this one's one i got last year specifically for my easter project. So isn't that pretty? Another project that I'm working slowly on is my snow project. So again, I say this every time, but just in case you're new, um, Julie from Kansas City World, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World was the first person I heard about this. It's a snow project where you stitch on it anytime it snows. I lived in Mississippi most of my life. It didn't snow that much, so I wouldn't do that. When we moved to Colorado, I was like, all right, I could do a snow project. So I finished one I showed in a previous video, and now I'm working on another Santa that comes from the Santa Remembered book. This is from Leisure Arts. It's book one in that Christmas Remembered series. And I'm working on what's called Christmas Writer. Let me show you the actual picture. And I've stitched on it a couple of days since my last video. Not as much as I need to because we've had a couple of snow days. I actually have one day that I need. I might stitch on it tonight. I'm stitching it on a piece of, oh, I can't remember. It's, I don't remember the name of it, but I'll put it here. It's from Under the Sea. Um, fabrics and that's my progress so you can see I've got the donkey started a little bit from the reins there's the pink that is the little doll that the Santa is holding and I have one of his really interesting little boots done so and again I only stitch on it for about an hour on a snow day so it's going to take a while to finish it but it's cute. I love it. All right. So those are my kind of intermittent get through them. Now my focus pieces. I have decided this is based on um, Sarah's Stitchy Spot is who I learned this from. It's stitching on something for seven days. Um, I think the way she did it is the first seven days of a month. She stitches on one particular project and then she stitches whatever she wants. But I'm doing, I've mapped out each week of the month of different projects that I'm going to work on. And so the first week of April, I've worked on, oh, you haven't seen this since I've done quite a bit. I think it was the third week in March. And then the first week in April, I worked on my um, Splendor of Florals piece. This is my oldest whip. This came from a magazine. It's just Cross Stitch Magazine. 
I've talked about it multiple times because this is an old whip. I started in 2014. And the last time I showed you, I was working on the November marigolds. And I said I was going to start here. And I have finished this block. And then this last seven days, I got so much done. I actually finished this border here. I had not put that in place. Started on this one. Put this border in. So all of that. And then I've got a good portion of this at the top. So let me show you. So that is the poppies, and then below that is the marigolds, or the chrysanthemums, chrysanthemums, sorry. So very pretty. Let me see if I can open the whole thing up so you can see. And I'll go slow so you can see the violets and the daffodils, so that's February and March, the Lily of the Valley and Roses, May and June, the August Poppies and September uh, Morning Glories, Whoop. and then the November Chrysanthemum and the December Poinsettia. So very pretty, lots of work, but I will get it done. I'm getting closer every time. So in May, I'm hoping to finish the poppies, and then I will move up to, I think I'm going to move to the January block. We will see. All right, so that is my latest focus piece. Now what I'm going to do today, hold on, let me put this away is I'm going to switch to my next weekly focus and I'm working on, let me find which one I'm working on. It's in my little woodland creatures, so much to love bag. This is painted flowers. And this is a beautiful piece. Let me see if I can find the cover by Teresa from Shakespeare's Peddler. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count black forest from um, Lakeside Linens using the called for DMC. And I've said this in my last video, this is one of the most challenging pieces I've ever stitched because of the number of, and I've done Paula Vines, I've done all kinds of stuff, but it's on a black fabric, lots of color changes, 40 count. But I've got about, I would say about half of it done. So that's my progress. It is worth the challenge because it is absolutely beautiful. And I'm hoping when I do this month, this finger, Jennifer, that I'll get the rest of this middle tulip and then maybe over to that fourth flower. So this is the one I'm working on. I just have to do the top and maybe I can get over here this next week but beautiful piece by Teresa and in the chart she gives you a color version or a black and white so she's just making everybody happy now what I had to do because it's smaller the print is smaller is I took a picture of it with my iPad and I blow it up and use my iPad and use a highlighter on my iPad to block out what I've stitched so that helps a lot all right, I think that's everything that I've worked on or am working on. Um, market, I'm going to talk about market for a minute. So market has come and gone, and many of you have already stitched up things that you loved at market. I loved a lot of things at market. One of my favorite things was not something I expected. It was actually, and I've started it already. Um, I Where was it? I was in the Dinky Dice booth. And she, or the Dinky Dice, they distribute for Shannon Christine and Erin Elizabeth. <clears throat> excuse me, Erin Elizabeth Designs. And when I walked in, I saw this on display and the silk pack that comes along with it. And I had to stitch that. It's Pumpkin Lane Sampler by Erin Elizabeth. 
I don't have this in stock right now. I've got to order more in my shop, but I'm sure you can find it on maybe if Erin Elizabeth has her own. I am stitching this on 18th century Blackbird 32 count from R&R. &R, and that's my progress. Oh. People don't like needles and they're stitching. So it's going to be beautiful. But look at these silks. Oh my goodness. They're so pretty. Oh, hold on. I'm going to show you like Teresa. This is how Teresa's threads look when she's working. They're just so pretty. So we've got this gorgeous olive green. And kind of a khaki. And then this beautiful pumpkin. And then a kind of a charcoal gold color. And then this tealy color. So just love them. I promise you they were beautiful in their package. <laughs> so, but so I haven't stitched on that but like one day. But eventually I'll get back to it. The last thing I want to show you are the two charts that I want to start. The first one is an old chart from Brenda Gervais. It's called Harrietta and Company. And it's just that little bunny and her little plaid dress with her bunny head Easter basket. So I plan on starting this probably this weekend because I love to start. If you know me, I love Brenda Gervais stuff. So I'm supposed to start one uh, each month this year. I did not start one in March because it was too busy. And then the other one is my other favorite from Market. It's Plum Street and that's Nelson. Look at that. I absolutely love that. The horse is amazing and the tree is beautiful. So that's my other new start. So that's Plum Street Samplers Nelson. I just love that. The model was stitched on Vintage Homespun, which just came. I just ordered some. It should be here. I think it's, they said it's going to be delivered Thursday, but I have some coming, 36 count. And it uses a lot of DMC Weeks Dye Works, some classic color works. But she always gives a DMC conversion. So beautiful. All right, so that's my cross stitching. A couple of things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about some giveaways and then I'll talk about some quilting and then a shop update. Okay, so my giveaways. I have giveaways from the last two videos because I forgot to do the one for video 83. And so I'll do those first. They were some sampler charts from the Brenda Keys um the sampler company the first one was over the hill and that goes to becky farian 6193 grace and virtue goes to sharon 1198 and then lemon tree sampler goes to reader 18 oh, reader 1869 and then the last video, video 84, I had giveaways that were some samplers. So the first one I'm giving away is the Sleepy Hollow sampler. This is a an old out of print chart from Raise the Roof. And that goes to Char J57 or Char. And then the last piece to be given away is the This is Halloween from Raise the Roof, Teresa. And it goes to PD Badger 18. So I'm going to put my email address here. It's also in the um, description box. But the, if those individuals can email me and give me your address, I will get those sent out as soon as possible. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is quilting. I finished my prairie, what was that? Be Vintage quilt from. Lori Holt, and I showed that in my last video. I took it in like right after I recorded that video, like at the end. It was actually in March. Picked up one quilt, dropped that one off. She's already finished quilting it, so I've got to go pick it up. It has been a month. 
And I was supposed, you know, I wanted to have another quilt finished. That was my plan, but I didn't follow through. That's okay. I do have some sh um, squares from the Vintage Christmas that I'm working on. This is Lori Holt. And so this is the mistletoe. And if you have not done a Lori Holt either pieced or applique quilt, her instructions are so amazing. And the way she, uh, the instructions tell you to make these, they're just really good. This, I love Lori Holt's quilts and I love the sampler. Then there's the mittens. And then there's the gingerbread man. He needs eyes, a mouth, and his buttons, but I'll put those on later. And then the snowman. He needs his eyes, his nose, and his hands. But So that's, that's all I've done quilting-wise. I have, you can see spread out here, is the um, another one that I'm working on. Another thing I wanted to share with you was what I found when I was out antique shopping with my friend, her husband, and Hobby. Um, well, antique shopping. Most of these shops we go to, they're showing things from like my grandma's house and then things that were in my house when I was a kid. So that's not an antique. But anyway, there's lots of these shops everywhere. I'm sure everybody has seen them. There's some almost like chains. I know the Brass Armadillo is one we love to go to. We went to this one. It's, I don't even know the name of it, but it's on Broadway in the Denver area. So I know everybody's like, there's a bunch on Broadway. I don't know. There's a new CarMax or something, Auto Nation, I think it's next to it. But anyway, we were there for probably a couple of hours. And I look for, what do I look for? I look for sewing things, obviously. I like to look for little cast iron animals. I like to look for certain kinds of dishes, even though I don't need any more dishes. We were looking for wine glasses, which we didn't find any. Um, my friend, she loves uranium glass. So she's always looking for unique pieces. And now Hobby's interested in uranium glass. So he got some really neat pieces this time. My friend's looking for, she loves Pyrex and little tiny bowls. And beer trays. She and her husband collect beer trays. And her husband is a carpenter, so he's always looking for tools. So we were getting close to the end, and I had picked up several things. I found something. I found a one of the sewing boxes on a stand that was kind of cute. It didn't have it had um a, a box of an old Whitman sampler box, wooden box, that um had a bunch of spools in it. And um we were getting close to the end, and I looked down, I saw this basket and had yarn in it and I'm like yeah I don't I'm trying to knit I'm not very good at it I'm like but I'm gonna look because it was a neat basket when I uncovered what was in the basket I was so excited so this is the basket first of all absolutely beautiful basket and then inside were lots of spools actually this is something separate it's the wooden spools that we see all the time you know um Praiseworthy Stitches has several different stackers that use these as the centerpiece. And they come in different sizes. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those. And it had a set of wooden knitting needles. And I'm going to try to use those. It had a wooden crochet hook, I guess but it's flat. It had these things. Are these bodkins? I don't know, but they're wooden, two different sizes. You know, you can pull the elastic through or whatever, turn things. And then my favorite part, it had three of the little wooden, can't get them out of the basket, hoops or hoops. Miss Marlene says hoops. And they're in pretty good condition. One of them I know is a duchess hoop, this one. And when you look at the the cork, it's eroded, so it's not in perfect condition. That's okay. I don't use them. I just put them in for decoration. And then once this one was not labeled. 
It's just a regular wooden hoop. But my favorite part is something that I do collect, and I collect darning eggs. Or so this is one that's a different shape, and it had two of them in there. So I have eight of these now. I have some that are black. I have a couple that are this shape, but so exciting. I remember the first time I bought one of these, Nicholas was like, that's horrible. Why would you give that to a child? And I'm like, it's not, it's not a rattle. So, but the thing is, is I saw these, a different set of these. So one similar to this and one similar to this in a different booth, priced separately. And they were like $19.99 and $25 or something ridiculous. This whole basket cost me $25. So that was a super fine. And even the, the person who was checking me out, he was like, oh man, is all of this was in the basket? I'm like, yes, all of that. He's like, well, you were lucky. Now in the sewing box that I had, it had the Whitman sampler box. It's old. It still has the dividers in it. And then it's just a bunch of little wooden spools of thread. And then it had this, which is attachments for a sewing machine, but it folds out like isn't that neat? So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, but it's a cool item. And my friend's husband, well, my friend, I mean, John's my friend, he um, thought it was pretty cool because he is a craftsman. So anything like this is of interest. So, so that was my super find this weekend at the, I guess, what is it? Um, Lori from Mischievous Stitches, she calls it junkin'. So we were junkin'. Had a good time. All right. All right. Last thing, very quickly, just a quick update on the shop. Um, still on Etsy, still going well. I had a ton of stuff from market and almost every bit of it has sold out, which is great. I've reordered. I've got orders of fabric coming in from Be Stitch Me. They shipped that last week. I just ordered some more fabric from Fabrics by Stephanie. Hopefully that will come in soon. They're all so busy though. So I, you know, I ordered some more fiber on a whim. I put an order in for Picture This Plus, but you know, that could be a year. So, but um, I also went through all of my bins and made sure that the fabrics that I had were listed. And there were quite a few that I did not have listed and they're now posted. Um, I have all of my threads posted. So now Weeks is available on my on Etsy. I had not posted those. I'd forgotten about it. But other than that, I mean, it's just been, it's been a, it was a good market season. I enjoyed it. I've been very busy, but not crazy busy. Um, I still have, I don't know if I mentioned this on my last video. So I've got this new tab. It's called Only One Left. So when I get down to where I only have one chart left of a certain um, design I put it in that tab and right now those are 25% off so look at that and I think that's all for the update last thing is tomorrow is my last interview part for the chair position so I met with the committee and that went really well and then now I have to meet with my faculty we're not quite sure what we're supposed to do it's a 30-minute meeting but looks like I'll be the chair next year. So I'm super excited about that. Considering my dean has told me, well, not told me, asked me if it would be okay for me to work on during June. My contract would start in July. That she's talked to our VP to get me a contract to work in June. I think I got the job. So enjoying it very much. Uh, there are five permanent faculty members in my division, and then we have about 20 instructors and this afternoon three of the five were in my office just talking we're doing book club so I've got them it's so funny to me what gets people excited and when you're in a teaching position a lot of times you miss out on what the tenure track faculty get to do with the research and stuff so you kind of get bogged down because you're so busy teaching 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 and one of the things that I always loved was when we would do some type of book club or I would do research or something just to kind of, plus my textbook writing, just keeps you excited about learning new things. So when I accepted position back in the fall, 
I actually gave all of the faculty and actually all of the people that wanted instructors as well a copy of one of my favorite books about teaching, which is um, Teach Students How to Learn by Sandra McGuire. And we're doing a book club. They're like, oh, let's do a book club. So that was exciting. And now they love the idea. And we're picking a book for next fall. And um, they're taking my advice. We're going to read Brilliant Blunders. So if you're a science person, Brilliant Blunders, it's really good. All right, I'm just getting way off topic. I hope you have a great rest of April. I will try to get back early May for my next update video. I do have a trip to Mississippi planned in May, and then I'm going to St. Louis for a conference in May as well. So, and I think I'm going to do Stitch Mania. That's what I'll do. If I decide it that I'm going to do Stitch Mania, I'll do a video on like April 30th. So, all right, thanks.